Jeremy showed me the designs for Ascension here in January. He had just drawn the concept. It's about ascending to love. Hey Jeremy, could you, what's the poem? Could you tell me just briefly? I'm on video about what your intention here, because I mean, I saw the drawings of this eight, eight months ago in January. You showed me you were so excited to build this, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, the original understanding of why it was happening was to basically create something that like transmits the understanding that like everything starts with self-love. Yeah. That you, that people like you need to work on yourself and like grow support yourself and like love yourself fully um, and that self-love is really like the foundation of like a really healthy partnership with another person or really like any, anything um, and so that's what Ascension is it's two entities that are growing on their own supporting themselves and then they make a conscious decision to like wrap around and support each other reach out to each other and connect yeah. and they create a unit where the whole is greater than the where, sorry, where, 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 where? a unit where the whole is greater than some of its parts and like they're rising in love, which is the heart at the top. Rising in love. Yeah, it's probably better to get from the single. <laughs> um, and then for me personally, and I just understood this like three days ago, um, for me personally, like this, this thing's here to heal and first and foremost, like I made it to heal myself. Um, and I realized this a couple days ago that like I needed to like put my heart in the air like where it's open, vulnerable, exposed, and like literally open so you can walk inside of it. And to, I needed to do that to clear out like any like subconscious fears, insecurities, like any like, non-constructive tension or energy, just clear it out and open as much as I can. To the point where really like when I think of my heart now, it's like kind of like this, it's a shell with a layer that, that's open, that's with a layer that's infinitely thin. And so, like, to be inside is no different than to be outside. Like, my heart is everything. And, like, the shell really is just, like, it's a symbolism for me. It's, like, this human body. But really, the, the heart doesn't, it's, it's just, every, I am everything. And I, I just realized that, like, two days ago or three days ago. After you'd already built it. Yeah. A lot of times we work on things and we don't really know why we're doing them. Truly, like, the deepest reason why we're doing them until after the fact. And so, yeah, there's a lot of meaning and healing and thing is like has a soul of its own like I, I just feel like grateful that it chose me to come through but really like ascension it's not my thing or anyone's thing it's like it's here to heal for its own for its own sake yeah so, it's an incredible gift thanks and i have i've had the gift of, of, see, of experiencing so many people receive this gift uh -huh. i mean like really i've seen so many days here people really moved and up and interacting and playing and experiencing your, your art yeah I mean, it's, it's been incredible to watch you go from your drawings <laughs> in january to have this thing here is is yeah. crazy man you were welding and all kinds of crazy shit yeah you learned just i mean you didn't have a background in this yeah i learned i learned how to weld i never built anything like big with metal before like a background in mechanical engineering but i've never built anything like this before like the biggest thing I ever built is like this big probably so yeah I learned how to weld I learned how to bend the bend all the pipes like me and one other guy did 95% of the metal fabrication um, and then one guy was doing the structural welding uh, as well as other people helping along and then we had a couple guys working in the LEDs thankfully like they did awesome work it's like I just I don't know how to do that I would have had to learn it didn't have time for that but yeah well, basically what happened was I started working on it and I, I just had to have trust that the universe would pull the right people to it to work on it at the right times. So I didn't have to do a lot of like people management or like planning. Even like tomorrow, like I'm tearing it down and I don't even know who's going to be there with me, but I know people are going to be with me because like it's, well, it's not about me, it's just about this. So I just have to trust there's a lot of trust that went into like making this happen in literally just seven weeks from nothing to something yeah so it's been a huge learning process for me to just deepen my trust that everything is happening exactly as it should and that there's nothing to worry about and really nothing I have to do but I also want to acknowledge your leadership in this and service mm -hmm. in, in making this happen you mm -hmm. know it's 
do you feel like that's included in when when you say like letting everything happen as it should? Yeah. So when I do, when I when I say like there's nothing I have to do, I don't mean that not, I'm not going to do anything. I just mean like we we tend like the way we grew up in this world, like we always think we should be doing doing doing, and it's a very much a like push 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 approach to life. And I used to have that too. With this, I, I, it was pretty clear to me that the, my role in it was not to push, 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 but to let go, like surrender and trust that everything will manifest as it should, as long as I just follow my heart. So I don't have to do anything, but I do things that are, that are aligned with my purpose, that I, that I feel compelled for my heart to do. Um, but if I don't do anything, if I'm not compelled to do anything, then I won't do anything. I'll just sit, sit there and stare at the sun, you know, and, that, and that's okay. Um, and so with this, like I did what I felt in my heart was I was supposed to do, but nothing more. Uh, that, that was the goal anyway. Um, and so by doing that, one, I'm able to, I was able to do this without really much stress, like self-stress. Like I was tired a lot. I was working 12 to 14 hour days, seven days a week in the shop doing manual labor. But... It was never like the kind of psychological stress that, for example, when I was like building a company in San Francisco, like that you, like the emotional stress, stress that you put yourself on because you, sh you, you need to be this or that or that or need to have this goal or that goal. It's more just like really flowing, like manifesting and flowing at the same time. It's like having a direction, but also like being completely free of that, of that direction or that goal. But, and so basically just trusting that if it's supposed to happen, then it will happen. And I don't need to do anything more than I than I feel compelled to do in my heart to, to make it happen or to help make it happen. And do you do you feel like there's an aspect of um, asking the universe for what you want in order to receive this as a realization? Yeah. So I think of it less as asking, more as like holding the vibration of the reality you want to create. Could that be called telling? I think just envisioning. Okay. Holding. Um, holding, envisioning. Yeah. Um, like like for, I just asked because for me the past week one of the things I realized was I'm not I'm not telling the I'm not telling the world what I want. And as yeah. I really state it and like mean it and and resolve it in myself and hold it, you know, as you're talking about. Yeah. And it comes to me. What know? I yeah for some reason the word telling or asking isn't it's really a bit, resonating. Okay. Yeah. But for me it's more like for me manifestation to create a physical reality that doesn't exist yet, but that you want to exist. Yeah. It's, there's two things. One is, like, it starts with holding the vibration of the reality you want to create. It's so, like the vision, and, like envisioning the wind, for example, like is a term. Yeah. So like, you know, holding the vibration, like seeing ascension real in my head on the playa with the dust going and us talking around it before it happened, you know, when I first was trying it. But, did, you, did you know I was going to be filming it today? Did you know that part? <laughs> <laughs> but it's important, though, that the vision needs to be heart connected. Like, it needs to be connected to your, your mission, like your soul, your soul. And so that, the manifestation, for, for me, what I feel, I'm just, like, kind of speaking this off the cuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't read this anywhere. Yeah, but please. what I feel is how it works is, like, you hold the vision. And if that vision is really connected to, like, your, your, soul, your soul, your heart, and your purpose, yeah. that's where you can start to actually manifest it. Like, is it rooted in, like, your heart and love? Something that's really going to help the universe be better, I guess. And, um, and help you be better? Sure, yeah. But it's easy to, like, it's easy to want a lot of things, to think that you need or want a lot of things. Uh, like, you know, to be rich and famous, for example. That's, like, that's like an easy example. And, but if that's not really connected to your heart, like, really deep down, like, as deep as you can get, then the manifestation may not work. Or it may manifest in ways that are, like, absolutely bad for you. So, for me, manifestation is all about holding the vision in your head and having that vision being heart-connected, heart heart-centered. And then, and then it's all about trust. That as long as, it, like, the... When you're in, like, the, the real challenge is, the tests are when things are going, everything's going to shit. Like, you have no idea, everything that you're trying to do, you're planning, is, like, not working. Yeah. And, yeah. like, you're just in the face of, like, defeat. Do you still, can you still hold that, that vision perfectly in your head with absolutely zero like, negative tension around it? Like, zero um, fears that it won't happen. Um, and so if you can, if you just maintain that perfect clarity that's heart-centered in the hard times and like just keep 
holding that vision, that's really like that. That was what the challenge is. But like I found that when you can do that, like it works. Like the, the, you, you will re- manifest your reality. What has it required for you to realize about yourself in order to realize this work? Um, a lot of things. Uh, a big thing if is you don't just really me. understanding like why I'm here. Like. I feel that it's true that we all have a soul and that the soul is here for a certain reason on this earth and that we have a purpose here and so uh, I had to like go through a lot of journeys to understand like why I'm here to eradicate or let go of all of the subconscious pain for my for my life that I've been holding inside and uh, to really just well, not until this week like remember that who I am really like deep down uh, which is like everything but and it's easy to say that but like I know I have much more clarity around it and like all of the the doubts and like the fears that are like live in the ego that I would have are less and less every day because I know that, that I'm just here to, to create we're all here to create and uh, like I found my medium of creation and like I know how to like stay in my heart and like feeling out like everyday life and so that's kind of like how I live so yeah just I figured out a lot while this whole thing was a vision quest for me and I figured out a lot like about myself to in order to make it happen but also in order for me to like evolve into like the next version of me you know uh, last night Teresa and I burned the previous version of our relationship uh-huh. we broke up and got back together like once or twice on this during the Burning Man this year, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. and like there was a point where I felt like I was falling in love with another woman, uh-huh. and I was thinking about ascend to love the whole time, yeah. and I'm thinking if oh, I really yeah. want to be falling in love, you know, yeah, and uh, and yesterday it just struck me to go back to Teresa, even though we'd said we wouldn't communicate again, and like mm. just express my profound gratitude for everything she taught me, even though it was so painful. Yeah, one thing uh, that I I just heard about this like this week, uh, something called like a. Uh, like a separation ceremony or a divorce ceremony, yeah. which is like basically throwing a party for breaking up. But like it's it just makes so much sense because you can just like release and clear out and like express the love that you have for the person, even though you're not meant to be together anymore right now. So that's kind of what that reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah. Super right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you think you'll ever have a divorce ceremony? Would you I like know. to? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> what about burning your relationship with? That your partner at some point happens every single day. Every day, yeah. Like every day we have a practice where we say "I choose you" in the morning or whenever we say it, and one thing we appreciate or something we appreciate about, appreciate about them. But basically, that that keeps us keeps us on our toes about it being like a conscious decision to be together. Yeah. So that, in a sense, is like every day you're deciding to be with this person, and that's kind of like reinvigorating the relationship because like it's it's not the same thing as it was yesterday it's, it's new today because today is a new day well and i'm new and you're new and we're new together yeah. And, yeah. and it's a new day yeah wait i you might have asked one more question okay oh yeah. no, we, we, we can get out of here All right, yeah one more okay <laughs> um i there's this challenge where well, i i feel very safe around a lot of people some people and then I'm communicating and we're like really present and I'm, they're meeting me where I'm at and I'm meeting them where they're at and then even this morning you know it's a consistent thing where around a lot of Teresa's friends she feels like I'm not trying to connect with them and they feel people end up feeling judged by me right yeah that happens all the time with the partners yeah do you what's your I mean do you have any thought I mean I don't know like I told uh, her I am actually trying it's that I'm I feel like I'm not being met where I'm at I, what yeah what's know? important like self love is 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 most important for everyone so taking care of yourself so if you're in an introverted mood at the moment and you're in a social environment you don't feel like talking to people then like you can't really there's, there's nothing wrong with that first and foremost like it's okay to not want to interact with people um, what's important is that the partners communicate like, deeply why what they're doing whatever they're doing and then from that clear communication like there should be an understanding uh, and then, like, you can figure out maybe, like, a better solution or whatever. Like, maybe it's like maybe you just want to introduce your partner to your friends, and if your partner doesn't want to necessarily engage, and they can just stand there not talking, but, like, still be there with you, like, 
like to, to support you in that physical environment. Yeah. Um, or I don't know, just don't go to parties together. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just all about like communication and like, and it's really important because everyone does it because it's so hard not to do. Um, to check your assumptions about why someone's doing what they're doing. By checking, you basically just mean talk about it before believing your assumptions. More often than not, your assumptions about some, why someone's doing what they're doing is wrong, especially like your partner. Because um, it's so easy when you're like that close to someone to like worry that oh they're behaving a certain way, something's going wrong. Is it me? Blah blah blah. Really, just all it needs is a conversation. Yeah. So just talk about why you're doing what you're doing, why you're feeling what you're feeling. And as long as both of you are coming from your heart, then you can just talk about and figure out what's going to work and in that environment. Is that how you ascend? Uh, sure. <laughs> it's just how I live. No, I mean, but you... is that ascension? That constant you know, checking in, communicating as a deep partner with somebody? Yeah, I mean, it's, I would say it's part of it. It would be just being like whole and happy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's definitely important to like stress that it's not, there's nothing wrong with like, not talking to people. Sometimes that's what you need. So. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. Here, can you take a deep breath with me?